really think about it, you know, a lot of the stuff that you might see like in a Lowe's or a Home Depot, you'll get a lot of stuff like that. I mean, that'll cover a lot of the things that you might get. And really, there's there's not really much of a limit to the things that you could get with flat bedding. If you think about anything that you would see like or work with industrially. What's up guys, the Aerodite Trucker here, back with another video. And today I wanted to make an informative video that is going to either welcome you in to the flatbed division of trucking or warn you to stay far, far away from it, uh, depending on your inclination. So I made a top seven list. I know that's an odd number, but a top seven list of the pros and cons of being a flatbedder. So let's go ahead and get into it. I've had my commercial driver's license for uh, a little bit over five years at this point in time. And uh, in that five years, I've driven a lot of different vehicles. You know, I've driven box trucks, I've driven rollback tow trucks, I've driven dry van trailers and flatbed trailers like I'm doing right now. So with that, I've been in a lot of different scenarios, you know, dealt with a whole lot of different things in a whole lot of different environments. And uh, I've got uh, the information that I think can help anybody that is new to this and is debating, you know, what division they want to get into, whether you want to be, you know, a dry van guy, a flatbed guy, hauling hazmat, or, you know, if you want to be a reefer guy, anything like that. But specifically for flatbedding, this will let you know if it's for you or not. You know, you can make an educated decision based off of uh, the experience that I've had. So I want to start with the cons because we're going to work our way up and end on a positive note like I always like to do. So number one con of being a flatbed driver is you have to deal with the elements. So if you sign up to be a flatbed trucker, you have to be ready for and willing to be out in the scorching heat of a Texas summer in the middle of July or the frozen chill of the snow up in Michigan in the middle of January or February, you know, regardless, you have to be out there doing your job, securing your loads, driving in that traffic, and just being out there sleeping in your truck on a daily basis, year round, regardless of what the weather is like, you have to be prepared for that. So if that's too much for you, you might want to look for a different line of work or a different division of driving if you're stuck on being a driver. Number two, being a flatbedder is physical labor. Oh, well, I wouldn't say a ton of physical labor. It's, it's not like uh, construction uh, where you know, you're know you physically doing stuff all day long for the entire shift that you're working. But you're gonna be out there securing your own load. It's, it's not like dry van where you, know, you have to use load bars and you can just uh, use straps. You know, with this, you have to use straps, you have to use chains, you have to use bungees and you have to physically uh, secure all of your loads yourself. Now you don't have to load your trailers, but you have to do all of the work of throwing the securement on and taking it off and dealing with, you know, if you have to tarp or anything like that, that's all on you. And as I said, you have to be doing that in the elements, like I said previously. So if it's snowing, you're gonna be out there snow getting snowed on in the cold, your fingers are gonna be cold. If it's raining, torrential downpour, you're out there getting wet, hope you got a rain suit, you're gonna need it. Number three is going to be securement liability. So as I said, you're gonna be securing all of your loads and unsecuring them as well with your tarps and your chains and your straps. Now the liability comes in to play where your load has to be secured properly. You know, meaning you need to have enough straps on and enough chains on in the correct places to secure that load down to your trailer so that it does not come off and does not move at all. Because if it does, it comes off your trailer, not only will you likely have a damaged or destroyed product, but imagine driving down the highway at 65 miles an hour or faster, and any part of your load comes off on the side of your trailer, behind the trailer, or rolling forward if you have to hit your brakes, stop short, brakes free from its securement and injures or you know takes somebody's life because of the accident that it's gonna cause. You know, all that responsibility is on you before you leave your your shipper to go to your destination you have to make sure that that is 100 percent secure and you need to be checking your freight along the way ever so often 
to make sure that your securement is holding place on its way to the destination. It's a lot of liability, a lot of responsibility, you know, because when you're moving out there, you have other people's lives in addition to your own, in your own hands with what you've done to secure that load. Four, tarping. I've talked about it a little bit a couple of times already. Now, with a dry van, you know, the standard semi-trailer that a lot of us will see out here, you know, you have the trailer itself protecting the load from the elements. Now with flat bedding, you don't have that. So if your particular load cannot get wet, like say you have a, a metal, a certain type of metal, or you have like a plywood or insulation in some cases, you know, sometimes customers don't want that stuff getting wet, or if it does get wet, it'll destroy the product. So you're gonna have to use tarps to secure or protect your load from said elements. And sometimes, you know, even if the forecast says that things are gonna be fine, it's not gonna be raining, that doesn't matter. If the customer is paying and requiring that specific load to be protected by a tarp, you have to do it, whether you think that the load needs it or not. I mean, I've had, you know, a couple of times where I've had loads of shingles that needed to be tarped and, you know, shingles go outside on top of the roof to protect the home from the elements. But, you know, if the customer doesn't want the load wet, you've got to do what they say, unless you, you know, want to risk not getting paid. Because I have seen some guys that, you know, took it upon themselves to not tarp a load that was supposed to be tarped and they delivered it and the load was refused. And those drivers didn't get paid on top of getting, you know, in trouble for not doing what they were required to do, what they were being paid to do. So if you don't want to tarp a load out there in the elements, you know, or any, you don't want to deal with it at all, because those tarps can be heavy, you know, 100 pounds, maybe a little bit more, I mean, especially if they're wet. You know, if you don't want to deal with that, flat bedding might not be for you. Number five, you're going to get dirty. You're definitely going to get dirty because we deal with a lot of industrial building materials, a lot of wood, a lot of metal, insulation, you know, stuff that's sitting around in factories and warehouses collecting dust, or sometimes it's sitting outside. You know, it's getting rained on, it's getting dirt all over it. And in the, uh, the act of securing it yourself, you're gonna get that stuff on you. And you're gonna be out there in the elements, like I said, you're gonna be sweating, you know, especially in the summertime. You know, you're gonna be filthy uh, at the end of the day sometimes. Now, of course you get the shower, but that's something you're gonna have to be prepared for on a daily basis, getting drenched in sweat, having your clothes be filthy, you know, while you're dealing with the load. So if you, uh, if you prefer to be pristine all the time, definitely don't come into flat bedding. You know, maybe get a job that's no touch freight, you know, where you can just sit behind the wheel all day and uh, have other people unload for you. Uh, number six, money, well, yeah, the money can be lower in the winter time, just because uh, with a lot of flat bedding materials, we're dealing with building materials. And when does most of the building take place around the country? in the warm weather months when construction workers are primarily out doing what they do or you know job sites you know anywhere where there's building going on it's usually done in the the warm weather months because the weather is more favorable and it's easier to work in for people that have to be outside so fortunately you know the the companies that i've driven for or i've only driven for one flatbed company at this point in time but this company i've never had a slowdown with my money in the the cold weather months you know it's always been very consistent thankfully but that is definitely a thing you know if you're dealing with this line of work you may not be with a a carrier that has a lot of uh cold weather accounts to keep them running through uh the winter months so that's something to look out for and uh number seven the last con is flat bedding is dangerous you know it can be very dangerous as I said, you're dealing with a lot of building materials and when stuff is loaded on your trailer, if you're not careful, if you're not watching yourself and watching what the, say the loaders are doing around you, some of the load on your trailer can fall on top of you or you can get hurt in the process of securing it if you're not being vigilant and watching out for yourself 100% of the time while you're out here doing this. You know, I've had the, the misfortune of uh, working with a couple of good people uh i didn't know them personally but they had been injured without going too far into it you know they were too close to the load when their load was getting unloaded and uh you know the operators that were unloading them you know may have moved stuff around there was like a shift and you know some of the equipment or not equipment but some of the the load that they were delivering fell on top of them because they were near the trailer when it was getting unloaded which is something you are 
100% not supposed to do. When the load is getting moved around by the forklift guys, make sure you are out of the way. You know, and guys got hurt pretty badly. So you can get injured by, you know, uh, dealing with the freight that we have to deal with if you're not vigilant. Like I said, you have to load building materials, so that means metal. When you're securing metal, if you're not wearing the proper uh, protection equipment, like uh, long sleeves or your helmet or gloves, you know, if you're working with metal, you can definitely get cut. You can get splinters from dealing with the wood. You know, like I said, if you're not wearing your helmet, you know, you can hit your head on a at a job site anywhere. You know, it's you're in a lot of uh, high risk areas uh, as far as like, you know, job sites, construction areas, places where things are very loud. There's a lot of heavy machinery moving around. You have to watch out and make sure that you don't become a uh, an injury statistic, you know, for, for the workplace. Yep, that's number seven. So. Let's move on to the pros now. Let's start climbing the hill into the bright side of uh, being a flat better. All right, and on to the positives. The first one, being a flat better is active work. And I know I said before on the negatives that it's a lot of physical labor and it is, but if you are the type of person that you like being physically active, you like working out on a regular basis, flat bedding is definitely gonna be for you. I mean, you're definitely gonna burn some calories out here. You're gonna lose some weight and you're gonna build some muscle out here because like I said, you have to move heavier things around it from time to time, moving your chains. You have to be active. You have to be climbing on top of the trailer, on top of your load to uh, put your tarps out. That's on a regular basis. And that's one of the things that attracted me to flat bedding because uh, I like staying in shape. <laughs> I think I do a pretty good job at it. And uh, this stuff out here, it's definitely going to uh, require you to burn some calories. You know, it's nothing nothing crazy or intense you're not going to be out here you know out of breath every day it's not like that but you're just going to be moving things around you got to walk around your trailer you know throw your straps pull things down climb up on top of you know a load that's going to be you know 13 6 sometimes now you'll have ladders but sometimes you'll have stuff that's going to be shorter than that but it's going to be easily you're going to be uh you're going to be able to uh put your hands on top of something and you know kind of like push yourself up and on top of uh, whatever your load may be, if it's lumber or something like that, that's a pretty regular thing that you're gonna have to deal with. So being physically active, it's a plus for me. Uh, number two, if you're a flat bedder, you're gonna have more regular hours. Now, most flatbed loads are going to be delivering to uh, storefronts or construction sites. I mean, on the rare occasion, you may deliver to someone's home uh, not like a house in a neighborhood, but more so somewhere out in the country, which I've had to do. I've had to deliver to Amish neighborhoods before. That stuff takes place during the day when people are awake. You know, on standard time, you know, like uh, 6 a.m. to maybe like, you know, 9 p.m. or something like that at the latest if you're going to like a, a facility that, you know, they're in an industrial area that works 24 seven or something like that. But most of the time you're gonna be picking up during the day and you're going to be delivering during the day. So you don't have to worry about making a, a 2 a.m. delivery or 4 a.m. delivery, something like you might have to do with like a reefer load, delivering to like a grocery store or something like that. So that's definitely a plus. Three, you're gonna have shorter routes. Most of the time, uh, from what I do, I have a load that picks up in one state and I may deliver it, you know, one or two states away. It's something that you can get done most of the time in an 11 hour, shift or maybe like a 15 hour shift possibly if you're driving a little bit further but most of the stuff that i deal with is next day you know unless i request something longer and uh number four is load variety when you're dealing with flatbed loads you're dealing with so many different things you can this is way too many for me to even name but i mean i can give you a few you'll be dealing with you know various lumber loads uh you'll get aluminum coils you can get uh, insulation, shingles. Uh, you can even haul, uh, you know, whole tractors. You know, really, <laughs> you can haul whole tractors if you're, uh, you know, dealing with like an oversized load, heavy haul type thing. But uh, really think about it. You know, a lot of the stuff that you might see, like in a Lowe's or a Home Depot, you'll get a lot of stuff like that. I mean, that'll cover a lot of the things that you might get. And really, there's there's not really much of a limit to the things that you could get with flat bedding. If you think about anything that you would see like, or work with industrially, you know, any kind of building material, parts, things like that, you can get a lot of that 
so you'll keep your mind working for sure and you'll be learning new ways to secure different types of freight on a regular basis and that's something i really enjoy about it number five on the list is trailer maintenance when you have a flatbed i mean it's just a standard flat deck you don't really have to do a whole lot to uh, maintain it as far as like a day-to-day -day basis as far as like keeping it clean goes the most you may have to do is just like have a broom to sweep it off if you have like i don't know some debris from whatever load you picked up on the deck after it's been unloaded you got to do that versus having a a dry van or a tanker where you have to get trailer washouts especially when you're dealing with hazmat you know something like that you have to you can't have things mixing and uh with a flatbed you don't have to worry about that i mean even with the the sweeping off of the deck like i specified i mean you would rarely need to do that i mean at least i rarely have to do that i most of my stuff doesn't have a lot of debris on it that would require the trailer to be cleaned off so that's just one less thing that you have to deal with and uh having less things on your plate when you're trying to work is better it frees your frees your mind and your time for other things number six on average flatbed drivers get paid more compared to uh, say a drive and hauler because there's added risk you know I, I specified it before in the the cons how it, it's more dangerous you're working out in the elements and uh, you have to tarp things you know when you tarp your load you get paid more for tarping and like I said the added risk uh, the job is harder in general because you have to get out and you have to handle uh, the securement yourself and the unsecurement taking everything down and uh, you know who doesn't want more money that's why we're all out of here doing this anyway <laughs> so that's definitely a plus and uh, to round out the list number seven is you can advance from flatbedding into other well not so much divisions but other higher steps on the flatbedding list so you could start off with a standard flatbed trailer and you can move on to like a step deck and then you can move on to heavy haul or you can move on to oversized loads and all of those can pay more money there's more risk it's a little bit well some things are a lot more difficult dealing with that but you have options you don't have to stay stuck just doing standard flat bedding if you don't want to and you can advance your career that way while still being a flat better technically just a, a different level of flat bedding so hopefully that list will help you guys you know to make your decisions uh, i tried to keep the list even so it wasn't lopsided one way or the other i tried to come up with the same number of pros and cons uh for the whole list so hopefully this list will help you guys definitely list below in the comments if there are any pros or cons to being a flat better that i didn't list in this video i'm sure there's probably some things that i hadn't thought of uh, but i definitely look forward to reading them i'm going to end the video there guys i appreciate all of you watching liking commenting and subscribing to the videos make sure that you're hitting that bell icon so you can be notified when i drop a new video for you so until the next time Get your red eye trucker out. See you guys farther down the road.